Eugene, there's always exciting things around here, but the most exciting thing this morning would be the announcement that you made for Kevin Jusset. Yeah, yeah, fantastic for um, um, uh, the UFC and uh, Sean Shelby to give uh, Kevin an opportunity to show his craft, what he's been working on for so long now, um, for so many years, and that's just his skill and his craft. And I, I know he's a world-class fighter, and he'll do some good things in that uh, welterweight division. He's a very developed fighter. So he's not one of these fighters coming into the UFC who isn't ready for the top level and has to build himself. Um, and he's just, uh, he's just, he's uh, everything that you expect a professional fighter to be. He's dedicated. He puts some time into his craft. He uh, respects the coaches and the people that help him. He's a contributor to the team. And uh, he's the best welterweight, and he's the best unsigned welterweight to a major promotion in Australia and New Zealand, and that's a fact. So um, he he deserves his spot, and um, yeah, it's fantastic to have a small part of that, especially when a guy comes to you and puts all his faith and his trust in you and says, "Are you able to help me achieve my goal?" And I'm not one to say no, I'm not. So I say, "Yes, I am." I uh, get behind the guy and then uh, we get to this point, so uh, thank you for the opportunity UFC, Sean Shelby, thank you very much. And uh, another, just another big shout out, obviously my uh, partner in crime, uh, Ash Balcastro, who works behind the scenes a lot, uh, managing the boys, um, he worked hard to get Kevin this opportunity. In fact, it was a week ago or the sparring that we just had in the weekend I messaged Ash and I said it was after watching Kevin and Israel spar and uh, I'm sure Israel doesn't mind me saying but Kevin absolutely uh, pasted him and I'm not talking about in any grappling or wrestling I'm talking about in the stand-up then took him down and won the last part of the round and I looked at that and I was like mate this guy belongs in the upper echelon of 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 uh, the fight world. He just took apart the middleweight champion. And, uh, you, know, it, you know, it's sparring, it's in the gym, so I don't take anything from that. But um, I messaged Ash, I said, you gotta, get, you gotta do something for this guy, man. He's, he's, ready to, um, he's ready to show the world what he's been working on for a great many years now. So I'm very happy for him. Yeah. Great, great. Tell us a little bit about the rest of the team and how the training's been going. Yep, no, the team's humming. Um, obviously, <laughs> man, when you have like this many guys um, on, um, we try and use that to its advantage. You know, we try and capture that energy and that excitement, having all the guys uh, that are performing. I've got people fighting the week before. I've got the Eternal the Friday before. I've got. Um, Janae Harding and Nick Orderly Kingy and a few others fighting the week after. Like, there's a whole lot of people training for fights right now, and it's a um, pretty amazing atmosphere. Pretty amazing atmosphere. It doesn't happen often that you get this many high level athletes um, all training at the same time. So, um, yeah, pretty stoked at the moment with the environment. Of course, um, Izzy, uh, tell us a little bit what you're expecting from him up against Sean Strickland. Yeah, I mean, as he, as, he, as he will go out there and try to put on a masterclass like he, like he always does, you know, he, he will, uh, we will look, we have and we have looked at Sean closely and we've made an assessment of what his strengths and what his weaknesses are and we've, uh, we've made a pretty good effort at, um, you know, trying to get inside the mind of his coaches and his team and figure out the multiple avenues that they might be taking in this fight. Um, so yeah, we, we think we've um, got something together that we're very satisfied with given that um, we normally put on a lot more work than this but we just weren't sure which way it was going to swing, whether the fight was going to get pushed back, whether Driscus was initially Driscus was going to be in and then Strickland and then Cannonier was mentioned for a while and then a later date. So. <coughs> it was um, good to get the date 
and the opponent locked in, so we could, me and the coaches could do, um, do our work here. I remember one time asking you about was there anybody uh, more difficult to work out their opponents, and it was uh, on that occasion it was Carlos's opponent was very difficult. Is there anybody that you've had trouble figuring out? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Tyson's guy I've had to look at really closely, like. Uh and quite often it's like that, it's kind of like the unknown entities a little bit that um, don't necessarily garner a lot of attention from other people. Sometimes you've got to look at them closely and you can see, you can see attributes that they have that can be troublesome. And then you're like, okay, we need to take that off the box, we need to take that off the box, we need to take that off the box. So I've had a really good look at Carlos' opponent. Um, <coughs> Who else has got some tricky opponents? I mean, they're all, they all demand respect, but sometimes there's just, some are a little bit more of a head twister than others. Um, Strickland, we've had to double down of, and he's, for obvious reasons, um, he's, he can be a difficult person to plan for. Um, we have to take, we have to take multiple avenues in that because, um, Sean sometimes fights the way that you expect him to fight, but sometimes it just abandons that. Yeah, which is very unusual mm. at this late stage in the sport when you become, when you get to this level and you get this good. Uh, you get some audibles, you get some change ups and stuff, but you don't get them significantly where the fighter's just wanting to throw the whole game plan out the window. So, like, he, he you know, he, he, that can be tricky, and we have to account for that. Like, we, ha we have to account for that. We have to leave no stone unturned, yeah. Um, do or die fights for Shane and Blood, is it, at this stage? Yeah, or? absolutely. Like, those guys are coming off multiple losses, so, I mean, um, obviously, Kai. Um, Kai's not fighting anymore, but he's coming off a loss. Whenever you're coming off a loss, man, the, roof, roof, the UFC, this is the, this is the, this is, you can't go any higher, and a loss just sets you back. So, um, those guys are coming off multiple losses, and likely this will be their last fight unless they can turn around and get a spectacular win. So, um, <clears throat> that's the way we're training them with that in mind. Um, and, and I'm looking for those guys' mindset to be in the right place. And so, there's a lot of work going on. Um, that was that was going to be my question. Is it yeah. is it more mind or or physical? Well, those are, I mean, like anybody, like by the time you get a guy to the UFC, I mean, those are world class fighters. Okay, Bloods has uh, you know he's he's had two what I would call very bad performances, but. What the people don't see is what I've seen, and the people discounted the hundred fights before that, when he beat some of the best guys in the world, albeit at a different sport. Um, and what the other, what people don't see is what I see every day in the gym, and that's a phenomenal, phenomenal athlete who can be one of the best in the world, but has just got some, um, there's some stuff in the top two inches that he has to work out. And Shane is the same. Shane's a phenomenal fighter with some very special gifts. Um, some very unique gifts that other fighters don't have. But at this level, I mean, they're all training the same. They're all getting game plans. They're all with smart coaches, the best coaches in the world, the best teams in the world. What happens up here in that seven to eight days before the fight and leading into fight day and all this, that that is what separates them at this stage. That, at the very top, you know, at the tip of the iceberg, that is what separates them, is their mindset. Yeah, so those guys, we're doing a bit of a head job on, but I, I mean, I expect them to, to come through. Tyson's another one that's um, uh, yeah. coming off a loss, and it was sort of unexpected but there was a reason behind it. Yeah, he's coming after, I don't know, lost and I'm not going to harp on about, because that's, that's, that's all bullshit, you know, you, you can't make excuses. If you walk out there, you walk out there. So, um, he, he had a little bit of um, adversity they had to deal with that he probably wasn't able to deal with as well, but 
at the end of the day he lost Fernando Square but he's looking to make a comeback and there's a little bit of pressure because he's obviously lost one fight after come, having a rip roaring start he lost that fight to um, to be fair respectfully I thought someone that he um, should beat that he probably had better skills then but um, we're just concentrating on this next fight get this out of the way and hopefully one day we can see that opponent down the line again yeah Carlos has been um, burning his opponents in the first round and when I interviewed him before he was a little bit more, he wasn't saying that's what was going to happen this time yeah. round. Uh, is, that, is that something you've said to him or is it so No, I think it's something we both feel. I think this, this, this opponent's a, a bit of a step up in calibre of opponent and he's a much more durable opponent. He's a little, more, a little bit more cunning. Um, <clears throat> uh, he knows he knows what he's good at and he knows the game plan that he has to push on us like and he's just going to be way harder to get out there get out of there than his other opponents so again we, Carlos and his mindset he has to systematically break this guy down he has to systematically find his openings he has to systematically create his opportunities so um, he's going to be doing that over the whole 15 minutes, yeah. As you head away to UFC, that, um, how, how confident are you? You think everything's gone to plan or you've had a few hiccups or? What? Yeah, no, look, I'm pretty confident. Like, I, my confidence comes from that. I just, you know, we're in here and what we do is not any different to what other people do, but we do it in our own unique way. And we think that way is um, gives us a little bit of an advantage. And well, what we do is we we what we do is hard, okay. And that's not to say that what anybody else is doing hard, but what well, man, uh, my our expectation of these guys is 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 it's a very big expectation, and that they have to meet. It's a high standard. It's a lot of work, a lot of volume, a lot of training. Um, some some people can't handle that, um, but if you can't handle it, then you don't have to be here. You don't have to be successful. You can try and be successful doing something else. <laughs> um, just quickly on Kai's injury, um, how how long do you think you'd be out, or you just have to play it by ear? Ah, uh, I talked to Kai today, he's still feeling the symptoms. Um, Can you see him back before the end of the year? Not sure. Mm. Not sure, his symptoms are quite bad. So, um, I mean, it's only recently he got concussed, but so the symptoms are fresh, but he's definitely, um, he said he's slightly better, but he's still experiencing some of those t real typical concussion symptoms so it's a pity I was really looking forward to Kai going out there and performing against a good opponent mm. um, but man I mean what are you meant to do man like concussion you got I, I, I advise every fighter to take concussion very seriously um, if you get rocked uh, inspiring if you get knocked down if you're feeling any of concussion symptoms, you've got to take that seriously nowadays. And you have to do that because we can't be stupid about it now. Now there's enough information. Now we have enough knowledge to know the long-term health effects of concussion and what it can do. Um, it would be stupid to not try and eliminate the risk of those, uh, you know, of some of those long-term effects that you get. It would be irresponsible. So, um, you know, we, we take it a lot more serious now, given that the type of information that we have nowadays. I mean, it's, it's a new thing. Hmm. It's a relatively new thing. I mean, I look back to when I was fighting regularly, man, I, gotta be at least a quarter of my fights, I would have had concussion symptoms before the fight, but you just suck it up, drink some water, and then get back to training, you know? Which we now know is medically the wrong thing to do. But um, the times have changed, so we've got to move with the times or we get left behind like dinosaurs. Yeah. How's Dan healing? We're doing pretty good. I still, he's still, it's hard to keep out of the gym, so he's still hanging around the gym and, and his cast. 
Actually, just floating around the back doing some shadow boxing or something. But keeping an eye on, you know, keeping an eye on what's being showed and making sure that, oh yeah, this is what the guys are showing and he's making sure he's not missing out on anything. So I don't think we'll see Dan this year, but um, that'll just mean we'll see a very fresh Dan next year. Yeah. Okay, um, can I get an autograph off you because you're a film star now? <laughs> Yeah, the film is being released 22nd of September, 28th, 28th. 28th of September. Yeah. Um, yeah, get in cinemas and watch it. I encourage everybody to watch it. It's a different film. Um, it shows a different side of us as a team and us as a sport. And it shows a different side of me and different side of Israel. Like I said to you earlier, like if it was up to me, uh, I probably wouldn't have put any of that stuff with me in it if it was up to me, which is why with these films, you've just got to sign the release and just like whatever can't, whatever you put on screen is, is whatever, is however it comes across. So we kind of uh, released ourselves to that, to that process. And it is what it is. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not against it. It just probably shows a side of me that I probably, if I had a choice, would have, Preferred. Yeah, but it is what it is. I'm very proud of Israel. I'm very proud that he has a film. I'm very proud that uh, I featured relatively prominently in it. Um, I, I mean, when I worked on the back end of that film, I honestly thought that was his film and I would have nothing to do with it. Um, but the way that the narrative went and the way that the director pushed it, a lot of it's to do with um, me and his relationship over yeah. the years. I don't want to talk too much about it because, yeah, go and see it. It's not what you expect. It's not the fighting film I expected. Um, but I think that's a good thing because I think there's a bit of fighting in there, but I think there's a whole lot of stuff in there that will appeal to a whole range of people that have nothing to do with fighting as well. It was fantastic, yeah. mate. It was fantastic. Awesome. Thanks, mate, nah. and all the best in Sydney. Nah, thanks again, Tony. See you there. Cool.